Hello, and welcome back to Iacon Underground Radio for the week of May the 10th, 2024. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> I am Jen, also known throughout the fandom as Trickster. And uh, I'm David. I might may be known as Strange 4, but not as well known as Jen. We're back! A Dinobot we- story. <laughs> I want to write that, and it's just going to be about adorable little chibi Dinobots. Oh. Oh, the ones the movies introduced and ignored immediately. Sure. Or just G1-style Dinobots. Yeah, well, yeah. So, yeah, we have decided to start trying to do this again on some kind of schedule. Uh, mm. Life kind of derailed us a few years ago. Mm. Uh, my work schedule, everything else going on. COVID. I mean, I guess COVID well, shouldn't stop you from doing a podcast. I, but it didn't stop us from doing the main one, but like it was doing a lot two of stress. Like, eh, yeah, it was a lot of just ambient fatigue <laughs> of everything going on Ooh. in the world. Yeah, but there is a lot going on in the fandom lately. Uh, we are going to get back to the whole convention scene this yes. summer. Uh, We are going to be at TFCon in Toronto. Uh, I may then also go to the Baltimore one, because I actually live closer to Baltimore, but you and Rob live closer to Toronto, so... Yeah. And it would be less of a commitment. I've been to conventions in Baltimore, and it's very hot and very sticky. Yeah, that's where I live. I mean, not Baltimore specifically, but that region. Yeah, it's gross here. It's super gross. Well, it's not going to be that gross on November 1st. Oh, on November, it might not be that bad. But yeah, for this year, just one convention. Yes, one convention for everybody. It's less of a uh, time and travel commitment for me to do Baltimore. So I can always just do that as a quickie impulse thing if I can find someone's hotel room to crash on. (laughs) But uh, yeah, so there is a lot going on, so we figured it was a good time to start talking again. It is the 40th anniversary, uh, making us all feel just, like, extremely ancient. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. It's the 20th anniversary of the Dreamwave comics. Okay, that kind of hurts more? Because, <laughs> like, I, I stopped reading comics before Dreamwave happened and and then just missed the entirety of it. That that's 20 years ago. I think it's actually I think it's actually past the 20th anniversary. I think that was like 2001. Mm. So that's yeah, we're past the 20th anniversary of the Dreamwave comics. So I I think when the uh when I saw something about the 20th anniversary of the Postal Services album, I was like, I'm going to die now. I'm just going to crawl off into a hole and, and die now. Because USPS things... <laughs> put out an album? What? No, no. It's it's a excellent indie rock album from approximately 20 years ago. Oh. And then I will turn dust and blow away. Yeah, just uh, music references, <laughs> like... No, they don't work for me. It's good. I'm going to make you listen to some. So, we have a lot going on to talk about. We're going to try to stick to more recent stuff right now. Uh, The biggest thing this week uh, is that there is some toy news out of Japan. Yes, uh, including toy Christmas yet again. Yes. So, what is up with new toy Christmas in Japan? Is this... It's the Shizuoka Hobby Show. Yeah, Shizuoka Hobby Show. It, well, the thing is, like, every every quarter there seems to be a new toy show in Japan with various things, showing off your Transformers or uh, Gundams and whatnots that's new. And this is just this seasonal one. Your Transformers and your Gundams. And there wasn't a lot of, like, Transformers stuff, but uh, there's some neat, shiny things, like another Power Master Prime from some different company, I think. Is it? So that wasn't the Masterpiece one? Because I haven't I, been keeping... I did, no, I, that's the thing. I, I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. I know there's the Master uh, Masterpiece Jinrai coming out, uh, and Super Jinrai and God Jinrai, and... Oh, maybe it was the same one? I don't Super know. Super God was... Master Jinrai. 
Oh, I guess it is the masterpiece. It just did. I don't know. That's another thing that's coming out. Masterpiece Genrai is like, sure, whatever. I don't, I don't, the proportions are weird. Ridiculously cartoon accurate, but that isn't exactly a good thing. He yeah, has no I mean, feet. I guess that depends. Well, I didn't realize Rob Liefeld designed him. But uh, <laughs> I guess that depends on how much you're interested in him as Genrai and how much you might be interested in him as Power Master Optimus Prime. Honestly, neither. So... <laughs> Probably, I mean, Optimus Prime was a power master in some really good stories. But yeah, I, I also... know, but like, it, it's like that body is so minimal. I had the original toy, and Masterpiece just doesn't interest me most of the time. I have two of them. I also I have two of them. Which two do you have? Uh, Soundwave with all his little friends and Acid ah. Storm. Nice, because nice. Monzo. Uh, I naturally got the G2 sideswipe because ah, I yes. could not resist that Derek Yanniger face mm. and all of the extra guns. Uh, and I impulse bolt bought a Road Rage. Oh, yeah, that uh, one the was last, tempting. Last TFCon I was at. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, those were, uh, I mean, Masterpiece is definitely, like, if there's a character you're really into, it's cool to just get that one. But as a line to collect, it's seems like kind of a pain in the rear big and expensive and you're not going to transform them that often yeah i can't say that i care about either gen rai or power master optimus prime enough for that price point no because that's uh it's crazy expensive <laughs> uh but yeah that also uh speaking of characters who i do care enough about to sell a kidney uh, there is that. So what's up with that Rodimus? Is he, so there's an IDW Rodimus yeah. uh, based heavily on the flame toys design. Yeah. It, uh, it's, it transforms. I, is this, is it like a licensed, it looks like it's first I, party. Yes. I think it is good because it has like the transformers. It says transformers on it. It's like, it's well, yeah, licensed, but licensed third party IDW which I guess Rodimus. Is, does that count as second party? <laughs> yes. Yes, I guess it does at this point. I don't know. I guess second party if is if that's a model kit because then you are making it. Yeah, second, whatever. Second person is like, you do this. <laughs> so Flame Toys well, but, model but kits second are second party. Because it's, like, it, 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 it's a new Rodimus that looks really cool and transforms and, yes. and looks like IDW. And it's probably going to be expensive. I didn't actually notice if it had a price. Listed. Yeah, it looks big. I don't know if there was anything saying how big it was actually going to be. Uh, yeah, I didn't see any pictures of it in reference to anything. Yeah, it uh, but it's it's cool that they're doing it, uh, even yes. though Flame Toys kind of already did it. And well, but Flame Toys was they didn't transform. Yeah, that's fair. So I guess it depends on how much you care about him transforming, which is. Not <laughs> well, well, yeah, kind of. Yeah, because the transforming one is going to be way more expensive. So, eh. yeah, but you know, that's it's interesting. That's that's something that Takara is digging into because uh, mm. Flame Toys, you know, they're licensed. They're a licensed third party, uh, so they could do whatever they felt like as long as Takara would sign off on it. But Takara has seems to have decided that this is something they're going to do on their own. Mm. Uh, so there's that. There was that uh, was it Leo Prime? Yeah. Leo Leo Convoy. Leo Convoy. Sorry. Leo Convoy. Leo Kaiser, whatever. Yeah. It, it's another one. I don't really know anything about it. I thought I saw some people saying it's a remold of a previous one, but I don't know. I love when they use the name Convoy on things that are not trucks. Yeah, it, it is... <laughs> Interesting. I mean, it's it's a, a long established thing from you know the late nineties, but yeah, yeah. There's some sort of Lyo convoy. Uh, there's a bunch of different stuff that they showed off, including Bravern, which oh, yes uh, is unrelated, but yes, not related to Transformers, except in that it's inspired by brave which is kind of a cousin to transformers yeah the, the brave series which was gal Geiger and might gain and stuff was what takara did after transformers ended and they just wanted to keep making robot toys that transformed yeah. and 
And I've been, I've actually been watching Gal Gygar recently because it's out on Blu-ray now in the U.S. Mm. officially. Oh, oh yeah, I, I haven't gotten final yet. I yeah. should do that. So I've started watching those uh, while while doing cardio because <laughs> it's very hyped up for doing exercise. And there's a lot of Transformers design DNA in Volfog and, well, yeah, and, and Ryu and Hyoryu. And... I mean, beyond that, there were a couple of the shows that basically just put new heads and new colors on some of the Dinobots as bad guys. Yeah. So it's it's sort of a offshoot, a cultural offshoot of Transformers in that it is interesting yeah. that uh, Takara is doing those. Takara Tomy is doing those and not any of the many other companies that do yeah. mecha toys in Japan. Yeah. Oh, and, and Brave Earn actually isn't a Brave series, just has Brave in the title. Yes. It is kind of an homage to the Brave series. Yes. And homosexual fiction it's so gay <laughs> i've only it's seen so one gay. episode i i just need to get around to watching it but i know how gay it gets i actually started with that when i started doing cardio recently and it's just like oh. on my exercise bike for the duration of an episode and that was when i realized that what i needed to watch to like get worked up to be doing that was super robot anime specifically <laughs> yes. super robot anime not not real robot something that it has to be the kind where they start playing the theme song about two nope. thirds of the way through not just playing the theme song the robot is diegetically paying the theme song in the show <laughs> <laughs> yes in this case also it turns out that he's like projecting the like splash screen from the end of his transformation sequence behind him he's projecting that behind <laughs> himself oh he's a it's perfect amazing boy. it's a really good show uh oh and also of the uh speaking of gal Gygar, uh mm -hmm. of the uh i guess teaser silhouettes that they showed for upcoming stuff uh, there was oh. one that looked like a Gal Gygar, so... Yeah, there, there's another, um, the Genesic Gal Gygar, uh, what you call it, the prototype. Yeah. So that and is there's another Transformers adjacent... Was it, uh, or something? Uh, wasn't Gal Gygar designed by the same guy who designed Star Saber? Uh, probably? I believe so. I, I looked that I up. I mean, it's Takara. They shared guys at some point. Yes. I'm just going blah, blah, blah at this point, but... Cat, too many cats on my keyboard to look it up I'm afraid yeah. uh, but yes so it's it's all a little Transformers adjacent well also there, there's I, I forget what is even like for the 40th anniversary there's a new Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper that look like they're G1 toys but with lots of articulation yes there's the missing they're continuing the missing link series oh, that they started with Optimus Prime uh, yes those two are officially missing link uh, so, yeah, I assume they're going to be... Have we seen a size on those? Because I'm assuming that they're I, just going to be the same size. That's kind of the point. No, I I remember seeing pictures of them against... Yeah, the, the new Optimus that's the same thing. and They're bigger than their G1 toys, but like they're still like just barely knee-high on the Optimus Prime. I think. Wait, now I gotta... Now I gotta look this up so I'm not just try and find that picture. Yeah, because I saw it somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, those are. Uh, those, I mean that that does look really neat. Hmm. Sorry, awkward pause for a moment while I try to. I get to edit. Look it up out. the yeah, I, Gal Gygar. I know I saw a picture with them. Oh, there's a picture of them with the Power Master Optimus Prime, which gives scale, kind of. They are tiny. Okay, and <laughs> and editing out the awkward silence here. Yes, it's uh, Kneo Oka Okawara, uh, who worked oh, on... Okawara. Yes, he worked on Star Saber's design and uh, was the principal mechanical design on Gal Gygar. And various um, Gundam. Lots and lots and lots of other things. Uh, so yes, Brave counts as Transformers adjacent. Mm. 
so yeah, uh, yeah. There's the missing link stuff that uh, I think those end up coming at with the current exchange rate around like thirty five ish dollars US for the little guy. Yeah. Oh, that's not horrible. I guess, <laughs> but also a lot for a mini bot. Yeah, a lot for a mini bot with extra articulation. Yes. Uh, so yeah, those are coming out from Japan. Uh, we have some stuff that has been announced for Hasbro recently, uh, as of their last live stream, and hopefully, uh, so uh, there is another live stream sched a live stream scheduled for May fourteenth. Uh, and that will probably be showing some more of the stuff that they teased last time. Uh, mm. So there's going to be a little core class steel jaw, which is exciting. I want my little my little lion. Uh, there's going to be a Studio Series 86 Bumblebee. So there are a lot of question marks on that one mm. uh, because of the difficulty of getting the Volkswagen license. Yeah, that seems to waffle back and forth. So it's going to be interesting to see whether that's... I mean, they presumably, if they announced it like that, it's not just going to be a repaint of the Netflix one. Hmm. But also, it could just be a repaint of the next Netflix one, and I think most people would be happy. Uh, except possibly yeah. whatever deal they made with Volkswagen that caused them to not just use that in the main line. Uh, hmm. There are... it's. Sounds like there are going to be some toys from Transformers Devastation coming up. Oh, yes, yes. The, um, I need generic, that game. Like the Seeker. And now that I have an Xbox. It's a good game, and and you should get the game physically because there's no other way to play the game, and it's a really fun game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Media preservation, people. Yes. Oh, boy. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, it's wild that they're doing the studio series stuff, and they're like, well, you know what else is a kind of studio is a game studio. Uh, <laughs> so they're doing toys based on games that you literally cannot get except finding a secondhand copy at a flea market somewhere. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm real glad I bought that game. It's, a, it's repetitive, but colorful and fun and simple. You know, I did not have a console that would play it at the time, but I do now have an Xbox, so I'm going to have to keep an eye out for the uh, for the Xbox One version. Uh, I have heard that that is the easiest and cheapest one to get a hold of, so good for me. Probably. Because I am now an Xbox household, apparently, by which I mean <laughs> I'm a Bethesda household. Oh. <laughs> Why can't you romance Nick Valentine? It's not fair. I, you know, the, so often in games, the best choice is unromanceable. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, there is a a leader class uh, Studio Series 86 Springer, uh, which is oh. going to take... Oh, yeah, there's rumor. Well, no, I guess they are kind of confirmed. They just haven't really seen a lot of pictures. Of yes, them. there's no pictures yet. They announced it on the last uh, stream that they did. I won't say live stream, but you, they're not they're not live. <laughs> oh, yeah, because they, they also showed off a picture of Straxus, right? Yes, and it was yeah, just we're getting like one. We just, a picture of Straxus. Presumably it's a remold of Galvatron, but... It sounds like that's probably going to be part of the comic series, and they said there were mm. he was going to be one of two more, so it feels like a given that we're going to get a comic head blaster. Uh, uh, which is good, yeah. because the entire reason I bought Goldbug for that four-pack was <laughs> in hopes that someday <laughs> he would have a blaster to hang out with. Uh, so, so yeah, I'll have uh, Goldbug and Blaster, and yeah, I mean, Straxus is cool. I don't, yes. I don't mind the cell shading thing. I think it can look oh, good. Uh, I, it, yeah, it's fine. If he's part of that line, he's gonna have that shell cell shading. I mean, for him, that's cool because he's just comic only, really. But. Yeah, he's a guy who has only really been in the comics. So, but that's a great story. Have you read that story? D yes, I read <laughs> G1 comics. Okay. A lot, of, you'd be surprised at how many people these days haven't, like... Well, I'm old, <laughs> and I had the comics, and I skipped over Dreamwave, because I reread the 80 issues in a four-issue limited series, like, six times. Yeah. At least. I read them so much. Speaking of... 
Uh, did you see that they do have a listing now for a... It's like a thousand-page compendium of G1 comics. Oh, my. What, so a giant brick. Um, yeah. That'd be neat. As a... Uh, can pull it up on Amazon now. As someone who worked in a used bookstore, I really hope they're investing well in the binding. Yes. Uh, and I really hope that they are printing it on something that's closer to the original paper stock and not yeah. a thick, glossy, like modern comics. Uh, because, it's going to be thick and glossy. Because the thick, glossy paper is... It's hard on binding. It's very, it's a lot more likely to just come just all out of the binding. So it feels like it expands over time more. So let's see. Yeah, Transformers Compendium good. Volume 1 is currently listed on Amazon with a uh, projected release date of February 18th, 2025 uh, for oh. $65. And yeah, that's a good price. Yeah, I mean that's not bad. It is uh, one thousand and sixty-four pages. Mm. Uh, they also are doing a GI Joe Real American Hero one, which is a little more exciting, just because that one has not actually apparently been collected before. Oh, oh, oh! It only covers half the series, I guess. If that's at least it if that's what the says math one, says, well, it says uh, it, unless I'm looking at the wrong one, uh, issue one to forty four. That's possible. Unless it's the wrong one. No, that's. I don't think there's been another one that uh, that would apply to. So yeah, it does say collects the Transformers number one to forty four. So you will get two of those, and if you have an intruder in your house, you can use that to smack them over the head. Because it will be, oh, just thinking about how heavy it would be if they use the shiny paper. You don't need the shiny Very. paper stock on comics printed in the 80s. I, it, it, there's got to be a split the difference between the old newsprint shit and the shiny modern. We'll see. There's different weights of paper. Yes. I, I will be curious as, again, someone who spent a lot of time working in a used bookstore and dealing mm. with old falling apart art books. Uh, I will be curious to see how this is, like, the actual physical production of it. Uh, but, yeah, that is something projected for February. Uh, you could go ahead and pre-order it on Amazon. But, of course, I will tell you to go pre-order it uh, when the time comes from your local comic shop, uh, assuming you were still lucky enough to have one. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it is good to see... That Skybound is doing those because honestly, like, I was at my, I'm going to say air quotes on local because my local comic shop is about 30 miles away now uh, because the, the closer than mine, the more local one that was like a 10 minute walk from my apartment, unfortunately closed because their landlords decided they wanted more money. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Which is funny because I don't think anything's actually moved into that space in a year. So, <laughs> well, of course, dude, dude, what's going to move anywhere these days? But it's like, ah, uh, capitalism. Throw the cards on the table. So I hope they're enjoying um, their empty space. But yes, talking about uh, that while talking about toys. But I have, you know, I was in there and I was looking at what Marvel has done. Uh, with the Star Wars reprints and how they've reprinted their original stuff and how they reprinted oh. the Dark Horse stuff. And yeah, I was just did, like, was that could that be handled. us that you play in. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I want what they have. Uh, but hopefully, I mean, of course, we know that the ending of IDW got to be kind of a mess as far as the big hardcover collections never getting finished. and Yeah. Well, but I, wasn't there a rumor that they were going to come out through somebody now? The uh, Skybound, is that the name of the new yes. comic thing? In the well, oh, yeah. The Energon Universe, what happened to IDW while we were gone? <laughs> How long were we gone? <laughs> Who the fuck is Robert Kirkman? What, what's going on? What's this Walking Dead stuff? Yeah. Comics what's this Walking Dead guy doing? 
I, I read some of his comics, not Walking Dead, because I don't give a shit about zombie comics. I love I forget zombies. what I read, but it was like, oh, that was pretty good. I but have I discovered, d- I don't what the title was. say, a brief aside, but I do feel like this kind of applies to Transformers fiction sometimes when you get to things like Dark Energon. Uh, hmm. Is that I I find that I like zombies when it's about like badass metal cover undead hordes, and I do not care about zombie stuff when it's just about people being terrible to each other at the end of the world. Which so you don't like normal zombie fiction, which makes sense because that's the entire point of every zombie movie. It's like the people are the actual monsters. I like the undead but I, yeah. I don't really care Undead, about zombies. As metaphor is more interesting. Oh, Invincible, that was it. I like, I read the first year of Invincible, mm-hmm. thought that was great, and didn't really need to read more. <laughs> You're like, that's enough. That's sufficient. I mean, it, was a, it, was a, it was a really good, perfect 12 issues. So you haven't I read any more. of the Energon Universe stuff except for the free comic book day one, right? Other than the free comic book day, no, I haven't read any of it. I'd seen pictures, I know the basic premise of the thing, but... As, like, at the beginning of the year, no, it was even before, I canceled all my comic book subscriptions because I just was not reading enough Spider-Man and other stuff. <laughs> I was way behind. And then new comic came out. It's like, I'll trade wait. When when it comes out at the end of the month, we'll have a news update. Mm-hmm. When I actually read some of it. <laughs> other than the free comic book day, which was kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was fine. I don't know. Yeah. I, it's fine. The 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 middle part written by Kirkman himself was the boring part. Yeah, honestly, whew, Void Rivals, man. Yeah. Oh, I did. I did read the first Void Rivals. Eh. You know, there's this thing in in publishing about literary writers deciding they're going to write a genre story and this being every publisher's nightmare because they think yeah. that they're coming into it and they have all these ideas except it's just that they've never actually read a science fiction story themselves or at least not read enough yeah that, that's a comment that, like of the the big writers that i've read at least their early issues have not been great eventually like ta Coates really got the hang of it later on. It mm-hmm. took him a while. Do, do you know, um, why am I forgetting the name of the one author who, like, got it out of the gate? Oh, fudge. Uh, wait, I'll just go in the other room and find his goddamn book. Come on, Benjamin. Saladin Ahmed. Oh, right, that guy. Yes. Yes, he, like, he had, like, one book. I, I honestly don't know if a second book has come out yet. But then he, like, started writing Marvel Comics, and, and like, the first thing he wrote, which I think was an Absorbing Man comic. Hmm. I think that was it was the star of it was. I forget what the fuck it's called. But it's, like, it was like reading a comic by someone who'd been writing comics for 30 years. Oh, man. I was like, yes, this is good. See, Let him do more. And he has. That's how I've kind of been with the the Skybound stuff, is the one that I really am like, oh, this is this is good comics, is Larry Hama's Real American Hero <laughs> continuation. <laughs> yeah. He's, like, he's... Just let Larry Hama be Larry Hama all over the... Well... Maybe don't let Larry Hama write superhero comics, like, because he's written some really bad Batman comics. As someone who... his G.I. Joe comics are perfect. As someone whose favorite character was retconned out of existence by him, yes, I I gotta agree there. That would be Penance (laughs) from Generation X. Uh, Oh, yeah. May she rest forever in retcon peace. Uh, But... Yeah, Void Rivals kind of feels like Robert Kirkman heard that Saga was cool, but... God, yes, that that is the, sort of the thing. But also, like, the the very first issue is like, oh, someone <laughs> saw Enemy Mine or, um... Oh, what was the, the movie that was, that was actually based upon? Um, crap. It was Head to Shiro Mifune. 
why am I bad with things today? <laughs> They're like rivals on an island and they have to get together and stuff. It's, it's a basic story. It wasn't bad. It just, I didn't care about Void Rivals. Yeah, it, and, and I'm almost, oh, wait a second. Uh, yeah, I'm honestly like, I'm a little mad at Void Rivals at this point because I feel like it's, just ah. latched on to something that I actually care about to Hell make in the Pacific. That's to the make of. there you go to make me spend like four dollars a month or whatever comics are now. Mm. Uh, to, yeah, that's another reason I canceled everything to buy this book that I otherwise would not be reading if not for the promise of occasional Springer. Like yeah. I'm kind of mad. I'm kind of feeling a little taken advantage of, to be honest. But, yeah. <sighs> but like, like the, the marketing around surprising Transformers fans with Void Rivals and that we're in it and there's a new series was about as good as you're going to do for a marketing push. You make it an event mm -hmm. that surprises people, despite the fact that there have been rumors for at least six months that it was going to happen. You know what surprised me was back to that G.I. Joe compendium was when... At the end of some random 1993 issue of a G.I. Joe comic, suddenly there's Megatron and Starscream, and now we're having a G2 crossover. <laughs> <laughs> Which I absolutely bought that one comic out of nowhere, not expecting. Okay, yeah, that, that that's a better lead up. Oh, was it issue two of Void Rivals that I read when Jetfire showed up? I don't It's remember. the first one. He shows okay, up and then he's like, My planet needs me and just leaves oh. and it's like, okay. okay, okay. So yeah, I kind of feel like Robert Kirkman is taking advantage of me personally to read his yeah. saga knockoff to <sighs> But you know, I'll I'm gonna hang around. I've uh I've read worse things. Having I'm... so one of the things that I did during our big hiatus uh, was I digitized the Transformers Legends anthology for mm. into an ebook for archive.org. So you can go look that up and download that as an ebook. So, yeah, because there's no other way to get it, really. Well, I mean, you might be able to find a used copy on Amazon, it's, but it's probably going to cost too much. It's very, much. very expensive on the secondary yeah, for market. for a book that's just okay. And that is to say, can confirm I have read worse things than this for having Transformers in them. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yes, there's way, there's way worse stuff that was written for the Star Wars Expanded Universe, but... I still hold that that uh, hardwired novel... Uh, is the worst thing that I have ever read, and that puts it below an embarrassingly long run of Punisher 2099. Hardwired? Yeah! Speaking of things that are approximately 20 years old. Okay. <laughs> I don't and I've been thinking about... Oh, that's about... another thing that just completely missed me by. I don't think I ever I've been about thinking that. about getting those for... The next ebook project, but also it's terrible, and I don't want to because I have to at the very least proofread it because the OCR isn't that good. Yeah. Ugh. Well, we could always so do bad. a podcast about it, reading a couple issue or a couple chapters oh, a week. God. We could do that. We could absolutely do that because it's that I bad. Mean, enough people do bad book podcasts. It's, I mean, that it's be bad fun. enough for that. Uh, Void Rivals, however, is is not that bad. It's just dull. It's no. dull and not it, enough is happening. Yeah, I, I well, from Kirkman is a good writer. Like, Invincible was good. I don't know if it was good enough to last over 100 issues, but... I mean, that's the thing with the, the whole... Well, that's most comics, to be honest. Metaphor, the whole comparison to the literary writer coming in deciding to do sci-fi is that mm. they're good at being a literary writer. He's good at superhero comics that are deconstructions of superhero comics, and he's mm. good at zombie comics, but I don't know that space opera is necessarily his forte. I don't know. If he's got enough ideas to carry this, we're not seeing them yet. He needs to start rolling them out. Wait, well, the problem with space opera is space opera itself. Yes. 
<laughs> like, let's slide back to Star Wars. He definitely doesn't seem like he's read enough space opera to be deconstructing space opera the way Invincible is deconstructing superhero books. Yeah, probably. So, but... Well, the problem with space operas, so much classic space opera is, is very stiff and hard to read. I have been reading the Energon Universe Transformers stuff. Uh, I did not... I do not have the issue that came out this week yet, because I haven't been to the comic shop yet. But it's fine. I really like the art. Uh, the art has oh, a yeah, very... The, the art has Energetic. a very 90s indie kind of vibe. Almost like a Propulsive. Rob... Almost like a Rob Schraub kind of... Yeah, because... Um, oh, what... I'm blanking on the writer's... Or the artist's name. Or the artist for the first... Well, it's the writer and artist for, like, five issues or something. He's still <laughs> the writer... But now somebody else is drawing it right? I mean, is that how it's going to win? I think it's something like that, but the new artist really feels a lot like the old artist. It's a very similar style. Oh, oh Daniel Warren Johnson. That's yes. his name. I would almost say that he feels like he's going for a Derek Yanniger vibe, except I don't know that he's actually read anything from Derek Yanniger. Yeah, no, it, it feels like not, he was inspired by like as good as, uh, similar British artists from like 2000 AD. It's not... Was Derek Yanniger British? I thought he was. Jeff Sr. is British. Oh, I, right. I was thinking of Sr. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, also Jeff Sr., that same sort of thing. He's, he's not yeah. quite as good at it as Kei Zama is, but you're not well, going to top them. Right. God, pretty much no one is. For, for that <laughs> weird era of art that, that was like 2000 AD in the 90s to the 2000s. Yeah. Uh, need more Kei Oh my God. Kei Zama on on that would be actually be the perfect of the old artist from IDW. Yeah. Kazama on the, the new series would be amazing. I still hold that people are unfairly mean to the uh, Death's Head mini that they did with uh, Teeny Howard. Just because was, it ended I, up being more about Young Avengers than anyone expected. Yeah. <laughs> Which, like, I mean, for Young Avengers, it was fine. It's just, it was Young Avengers and, and Death's Head, and that was a and uh, that was like chocolate and peanut butter. They don't go together. But then he got adorable <laughs> young death set, which I thought was... Yeah. Things can be new sometimes. Hey, amazing idea. Things can be new sometimes. Yeah. Speaking of things being new, are we ready to get to the, the feature... The feature discussion of this of this week? Yes, longer into this episode than we planned because we, we ramble and it's been a while. Every single yeah, time, every single time we're like, we're going to try to keep this to about half an hour. And every single time, 45 minutes to an hour. Well, we didn't have a tight script or anything. <laughs> and they're just random toys and things. That we got distracted by talking about comic books. Yes. As I mean, we do. It's, it's fun. It's all. We, we didn't even t take that much of a digression into Transformers that are. God, why do I keep fucking... It's a Gundam that, like, there's finally a toy from Zeta Gundam from 39 years ago that's finally getting a model kit. Although I think it actually got one last year, but it was like $100 or oh, something. Oh, is that what it was that's like a limited from? Run. Yeah. Okay. I yeah, the Boalink, uh, Boalink Noah Shaman. Huh. It, which, the name is... It's a weird reference to, like, a bear or something. I forget the exact entomology of it but it's like it's a big green bear with a claw uh, there's, and I, it's one of my favorite suits and it's finally getting a suit a kid i can afford there's also some new funko pops coming out yes the astro well, train, astro tra the astro train looks really cute yeah i'll get that one at least yeah it's like i don't want to buy funko pops but robots they're they're less beady creepy eyes so i kind of anyway, like yes. the blaster because i like blaster a feature lot. presentation but yes Digressions. Oh my goodness! So this, so this movie is coming out on my birthday. Oh, I keep forgetting that because <laughs> it, it's like perfect, and of course that's what we're doing that month that it comes out. Technically, because new movies always kind of premiere well, yeah, on, the they come out on Thursday before they but say. Some also, come out Wednesday, kind of in some limited release. Well, that Thursday is my birthday, and we're not going to talk about how old I'm going to be because it's. Horrible. Yeah, no, I don't want to do the math of myself. So old. So old. So old. Too many. So, yeah. Uh, I think it looks really fun. Yes, Transformers 1. Like, 
when all we had was like actor names, it's like, okay, big name actors, you're doing a movie, whatever, and it's younger versions of them, and one teaser art, and it's like, yeah, okay, whatever, they're stylizing and things. But then the trailer actually came out, it's really fun. I know, I personally, a lot, you know, there are people who are like, oh, well, why can't it be Peter Cullen? Like, it's like, because. That's the entire point. It's a younger version. Peter Cullen is the adult Optimus Prime. This is Orion Pax. See, There's no reason it should be. I like. I don't. I didn't understand people arguing that at all. What they did for the Netflix series that was offensive. Yes. Where they were like, "Let's get cheap knockoff Peter Cullen, so we don't have yeah. to pay union wages." This is just. Replacing him with someone who's got who, yes, as you said, playing a younger version of the character who would sound different, but also yeah. a person with like name recognition. I'm not gonna say that they're trading up because Peter Cullen is great. Yes, like, but it doesn't feel disrespectful the way it did no. when they were just getting cheap knockoff Peter Cullen. Yeah, and when, admittedly, when they said Chris Hemsworth, it's like, that seems an odd choice. But then actually hearing him in the movie, it's like, or the clip or the trailer, it's like, that doesn't quite, it's, I didn't quite hear Chris Hemsworth in my head. So it worked. See, I have realized that from all the stuff that I've been reading and all the stuff that we've been watching, you know, over on Stasis Pod, we are elbows deep in season four of Rescue Bots. Yes. And I have come to understand about myself that it does not matter what age group a show is for or a story is for. Like, I don't care if it's Last Stand of the Wreckers or if it's Rescue Bots. As long as it's written well, I will enjoy yes. it. If it's about Transformers and it's written well, I don't care what age group it's for. I love it if it's super serious and mature and about war crimes. And I love it <laughs> if it's about cartoony dudes being space robot dudes. You know? Yeah. Well done having fun, which is what this seems to... I Okay, I, I have a quibble about the quality of the jokiness. It is a little jokey. <laughs> but, like... They could have just, as many trailers do, have stuffed all the jokes into the trailer. Yes. Yeah. Or they're going to be changed for the movie. I mean, there, like, there are okay. some people, and I know a lot of what I'm bringing to the discussion here is just complaining about other people complaining. <laughs> yes. But I feel like there are a lot of people who are like, oh, it just looks like the Mario Brothers movie. It's like, okay, but there's a big difference between the Mario Brothers movie and this movie, which is that I don't care about Mario. <laughs> Well, no, I, I don't think Luigi tries to murder Mario at the end of that movie. <laughs> I don't think there's ever a point in their history where Luigi is going to be trying to murder Mario. <laughs> no, yeah, and that's that's why it's extra interesting. I mean, like, we're doing an origin story, but that's not something Transformers has quite done that oft I mean, okay, it was in G1 to a degree, and then... It's one of my favorite episodes, it was the episode that established the aerial bot mischief hierarchy. Yeah, but but outside of one episode in G1 and IDW, it's not really something that's been done to death like so many origin stories in Marvel movies. It's not movies. like Uncle Ben. It's Yeah. I mean, what okay, or, or I have freaking, How many times has Batman's parents been killed? Yes. We haven't gone through that suffering of seeing the pearls fall hundreds of times in Transformers with Orion Pax and whatever Megatron's number is. D-16? Yes, D-16. I have a co-worker who is in his early 30s, and I like to think of him... I like to use him as a baseline of what your average media-savvy, pop culture-savvy, but not heavy into Transformers person is going to know about. And the things that he said in response to that trailer is, have they even done an origin before? And who is the pink one? <laughs> so. so, okay, so he's probably seen the, the, the Bay movies and, and that's 
osmosis level of normal people. Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Have they done an origin story before? Not quite. Who's the pink one? Yes. I mean, okay, usually when it does show up, it, it is... is uh, um, usually RC. RC. But then she became blue as standard for a while. And, and the Alita one, yes, it's there. It's, I, I'm... I'm fearing and hoping that the movie is going to end by Megatron crushing Bumblebee's windpipe. No, no, absolutely <laughs> not. Absolutely not. I hate like, that so much. I do hate that much, that thing for Bumblebee, thanks to the Bay movies. I would hate that However, for I this would find it, it just... hilarious. So, a little while back, for one yeah. of our Patreon specials, we did that animated Thor cartoon that movie oh, yeah. where they're teenagers mm -hmm. and at the end of it odin loses his eye in some stupid battle and it pissed me off so much and that's yeah, how that's much dumb. it would piss me off if because it just feels like something mm. they would put in there because they felt like oh look at us referencing this other stuff and it doesn't well, ah, i would hate it i would hate it so much what would you hate it as much if, like, presumably they're going to try to make a trilogy of these movies? Because this is one, and then two, and three, whatever. Oh, no. But but there's also, like, apparent flash-forwards in the trailer. Uh-huh. What if in one of the flash-forwards he does that, but we still have Bumblebee talking throughout the whole movie? And into the sequel. Maybe. I don't know. I just don't... I don't want to see that happen. I want that to be something that happened, like... Maybe a decade tops before Bumblebee is hanging around with no voice. Like, I don't mm. want this to that to be a problem he's been dealing with for four million years. Okay, yes, that is, that is a very annoying possibility. That's I'm, one of my problems. I'm more. I'm curious about who the fuck is Steve Buscemi playing. Uh, I I think everyone is I mean, assuming everyone's guessing a Star Screen. Oh, I thought everyone was oh, assuming the Quintesson. Oh, last I heard, everyone was saying Starscream. Quintessons would make more sense. Also, speaking of the fandom, the number of tweets that I saw with screenshots of that Quintesson, like, bondaging that one guy. Choke me, daddy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> screenshots Prime, just, say, just captioned, wish this was me. Yeah. <laughs> the fandom is is okay and not okay at the same time. No, oh, I, I am... Oh, uh, one the thing that I may be most excited for... Mm -hmm. Optimus and Megatron shippers. Yes, there's so already, even oh. just like immediately, the trailer went live, and within yes. an hour, people were posting art of Orion Pax uh -huh. in D16. Yeah, it's, it's like it's already a thing. It's so it's good. Th well, it's, it's been a thing since G1, you but know, like it, animated did a lot with it, and, and it, Prime did a hell of a lot. Yeah, I don't know that. I don't know if I'd say animated. Well. There was some I, I remember seeing, or may, maybe that was just like I mean there was fan art, but that's not yeah. the same as the text supporting it. Yeah, I guess no, it, it really was. Whereas text. in Prime, the text definitely once they had the thing where yeah. Optimus got his memory reset. Oh yeah, yeah. Prime Prime is such a series that falls out of my head. Prime did the origin, yes, of this kind of and, and oh wow. Had Prime that... is such a good show, but it's such a show that just slips out of my brain so easily. I don't know why. I am always thinking about Prime, twenty four seven. I, I like the designs; <laughs> they're really good. They're easy Dark to draw. Kenner John. Oh, that's another thing. The, the designs are easy to draw. That's always are good. They? Like. You have enough tech greeblies, but they're basic enough shapes that you can fan art easily. I guess that's fair. Is good, but uh, but yeah. So I that's I that ship. It either works or it doesn't, depending on the setting. And I think that here it is very much going to work very well. <laughs> oh yeah. In IDW, it worked well. I would say mm. animated, not at all. I would say. Well any Unicron trilogy stuff? No, not there. No, Prime worked. Prime worked surprisingly well, considering it's Shark Teeth Megatron. Ugh. Yes, <laughs> the sexiest Megatron. Yeah, yeah but th this one's pr oh, all the shipping. They have BQ and hang out with their Even friends. Even people who aren't like this. This is gonna be. I think this is gonna be one of those things, like animated. 
and like Prime was and like IDW one mm. was that brings a bunch of new people into the fandom. Oh yes, please. And especially a bunch of young and queer and female and <laughs> Yes, please. Yes. I think it's gonna be one of those things that brings that infusion of younger people into the fandom, which which is good. Mm. I mean, they make me feel old. They make me feel impossibly yeah. old. And then I see them getting in beefs with each other on Twitter, and I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh yeah, and like the like some of the shots and and like the vibe is very eighties color schemes. Yes, I like that. Like the the surface world and the sunset. There's stuff. a lot of bisexual lighting. Yeah, it's yeah, it's the aesthetic is really good. I don't get. Pe the thing is, I don't get people saying, oh, it just looks like a DreamWorks movie, or it just looks like a Mario uh, movie. Because the thing is, I don't watch those quite. movies. No. <laughs> well, that, that is part of it, yeah. Like, I don't know the tropes that to, they to might me, be identifying. To me, that just sounds like they're saying, oh, it looks like a modern CG animated movie. It's like, yes. Yeah. So there's... I mean, there's character tropes that you do the goofy things and, oh, we're, we're going to run out of here and then we fall and stuff. It's like the comedy beats are similar to trailers of those other movies anyway. It's like I haven't seen the Mario movie or half of these things. What was the last CG movie I saw? I don't. Yeah, I, don't I can't even like Frozen. I saw the Lego movie. <laughs> yeah, there's the Lego movie. I, I know I've seen some CG since then, but I don't remember what. Yeah. But yeah, I I approach any new Transformers fiction these days as uh, my my hopes are high, but my expectations are low. Uh, uh, yeah, kind of. But I think this, I mean, definitely I will take this over any of the Bay stuff any day of the week, because I've just never yes. clicked with the Bay stuff at all. Just I mean, I... Bumblebee was good. The Beast one Bumblebee was... Bumblebee was good. Bumblebee... Was fun, but I don't know. Bumblebee I, was the, good. The further I get from this, the more problems I have with it. But it was still kind of burdened by... Just needing the, the to be... Setting. Yeah, by the setting. It was burdened by having to be part of all of that and still having the stupid voice thing and... have. I mean, his design is a lot more emotive in that one and a Ooh. lot more like... A, a guy. Also, it had a quality shared by the best Transformer story stories. Lots of mentions of Morrissey. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just always a good sign in my book. But uh, but yeah, so I'm now that I've seen the trailer, I'm I'm definitely optimistic. I won't even say that I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm actually optimistic and i'm optimistic for what this is going to do for the fandom and although i'm mildly confused by a couple things like how the fuck is air in there that's a weird she just, choice she just is that is great that she's there because that's like that's a pretty deep cut she's yeah. getting a toy yeah she's getting a toy for which, it which, which to me means she's not just in a flash forward she's in this story, I would think, but you never know what yeah. goes. we're getting out of things that could be confusing. I am, I'm really excited to see to see what mm. happens with it, uh, and it's going to be happy birthday to me. I do hope Starscream isn't just like that one throne scene that's clearly a fa flash forward. Yeah, is it? I didn't really think those seemed like a flash forward, but well, I could be wrong. The that Starscream, Shockwave, and Soundwave are all there in a throw, and I was guessing, oh, this is the coronation of Megatron when the Decepticons are officially the Decepticons. Oh, feeling. I figured those were just uh, bad influences on D16. They were the bad crowd that D16 falls I, in with. But that feels really weird that that's Starscream. Eh, we'll see. We will see. I mean, see. it would be hilarious if Starscream is the Decepticon leader, or the leader of the bad guys, and then Megatron comes in. Get the fuck out of there! I'm. I know what the fuck we should be doing for the <laughs> proletariat or whatever. Me, I. I still. They're. They're going to be bad influences. It's going to be great. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's what I want. I want a younger Starscream as a bad influence of a jerk jet, <laughs> not standing in front of a throne. That. That's too much. That's movie two. Yes. Oh, that's yeah. Get some more movies. That's Transformers two. 
P-W-O, all spelled out. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be Transformers Series X. Because, like, the Xbox. Having the Xbox Transformers one. minus one. <laughs> Why does everything name so badly? Anyway, I, that... No, my, my... No, no, no. Okay, I'm going to argue the name of that movie is freaking perfect. Like, it's set in Japan post-World War II. I it's been leveled know. to ground zero. Minus one when Godzilla shows up. Shit gets worse. It so does. Much worse. That, that one does make sense. That one does yes. actually make it's, sense. Unlike the Xbox One. It's a weird title, but it makes sense. The okay, the uh, Xbox One. Fourth like, or fifth or whatever iteration of the Xbox. I don't know. Well, because they went to 360 and it's. I'm a handheld gamer. I don't know these things. I'm just waiting for whatever the Switch 2 is going to be called because it's not going to be called the Switch 2. Yeah, it might be called the Switch 2. Super Switch would be fun. Oh, that'd be cool. Solid and Super Nintendo. Switchness? Colors. Maybe. Yeah, probably not. Right. Anyway, no. uh, there's a new stream, like I said, on May the 14th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, conveniently, mm. when I roll my sorry rear out of bed in the morning. So, A plus <laughs> planning for that. Uh, but uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to talk about that in the near future. Uh, for now, this has been fun getting back to doing a news pod uh, and not in just... In an overly long one that I have to trim down. <laughs> as we always do. That's ev every single time we're like, yeah. this wasn't going to take too long and then it takes too long. Well, I didn't realize how long we were, we were going to talk about the movie, and yeah, that makes sense. In comics, it's been a while. Such a good, know. such a good trailer. It's I had to get, trailer. I had to find, like, I had to go get home. First time I watched it was lying in bed because, <laughs> again, because I work second shift, I wake up and it was like, oh, it's on now. So I watch okay. it on my phone in bed, and then I watch it probably on my laptop later, and then I had to get on my 4K TV. <laughs> find the highest resolution you have to find the one that's actually posted by paramount pictures on youtube yeah. don't go to the one sometimes that's hard to find the official ones don't go to like, the one, one posted, posted by, by hasbro or whatever well also there are a couple other official ones like hasbro posted mm. it and i think like paramount australia posted one that was just 1080 oh. or something but you got to go to the paramount one to get the 4k and then I got my new fancy over ear headphones with the spatial, <laughs> with the spatial audio. I put on my Beat Studio Pros so I could listen to it in the best possible audio. And I was like, "This movie is going to be great. This movie, I'm I'm excited for this movie." And so yeah, we will have that to look forward to all summer. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and wrap up for this week. Uh, until next time, which will be hopefully sooner than the last next time, this has been Jen. And David. Oh, you want to give your socials? Uh, uh, <laughs> at Strange4 on uh, Mastodon and uh, what you call it? Uh, Twitter. <laughs> or, uh, well, Retro Pizza. Is the Mastodon thing? Yes, I am on the. I am running uh, the Retro Dot Pizza Mastodon server because, as it turns out, here in the year 2024, Retro Dot Pizza is a valid domain name. Uh, I am at Trickster there. That is T R I X T E R. I am also at. I have reclaimed the at Trickster. Uh, username on Twitter that is at T R I X T E R. I like to say I post on Mastodon, but I shit post on Twitter. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. it's kind of like that. All right, I, I post depending upon timing and feeling. Yes. Except on uh, like on the weekend, I'm more on uh, Mastodon. Yeah, it's gotta be on there for Monsterdon. <gasps> Ooh, journey to the center of the earth! Yay! Exciting. All right, good night, everybody. Good night. Uh -huh.
My lines are squiggling. Are your lines squiggling? <laughs> it's a good thing we checked. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, there we go. Is it squiggling? Yeah, now? it's squiggling now. Okay. Okay. I feel like this is important to be recording yeah. that the lines are squiggling. I don't know why I defaulted to something different. I plugged. I think I plugged the mic in before I turned Audacity on. Uh, whatever. It hates you. Apparently, it, it hates does. all of us. All right, ready? Yes. Sorry, I need to silence my watch because my mother is trying to have a conversation. Oh. Sorry, that was the wrong button. That was the button to make my phone make a sound. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you can edit this out or not. Yeah, I'll probably edit it out or throw it at the end. <laughs> Uh, also, my sinuses are uh, funky. All right. Well, we can we can wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs>